everyone. Uh, welcome back to AI News. My name is Ethan, and uh, this interview will be our very first English interview. We have a very special guest here, Mr. Burton Brink. He is the Republican candidate for the District 49 California State Assembly. Yep. So, uh, Mr. Brink, would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself and uh, which city are in your district? Sure. <clears throat> Thank you, Ethan. Uh, my name is Burton Brink. Um, I'm a retired sergeant with the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. Um, I've uh, grown up in the uh, 49th Assembly District. Um, my family's been here since 1967. Uh, I went to the Arcadia uh, schools, um, Highland Oaks, Foothills oh. Junior High, and uh, <laughs> Arcadia High School, Go Apaches. I've started my law enforcement career actually in the city of Arcadia in 1977. I was a police explorer at uh, 14 years of age, and uh, anybody interested in law enforcement, I highly recommend that for uh, children that age to, to go in and see what law enforcement's all about. Um, I was there until uh, 1982, and uh, that's when I went over to the Monterey Park Police Department, um, became a reserve officer, was there for uh, about six years, and then in 1989 went to the Sheriff's Department, and uh, ended up at uh, Temple Sheriff Station, and that's in the city of Temple City, and Temple Sheriff Station uh, covers the majority of the 49th Assembly District with Temple City and Rosemead and um, South San Gabriel, uh, San Gabriel counties, Pasadena counties, um, and those areas. I ended up getting involved in politics because I got very upset at our politicians. Um, our politicians were all about them, and so I decided that uh, I said, listen, I'm not happy with what they're doing. I want to make sure our communities are safe. I want to make sure our taxes are being used properly. I actually believe in lowering our taxes because it's uh, bad. And so here I am. Um, the cities we cover are the cities of Alhambra, Arcadia, uh, South Pasadena, San Marino, San Gabriel, um, East Pasadena County area, uh, Rosemead, Temple City, El Monte, uh, and Monterey Park. Oh, wow. All the city that I actually know. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. <laughs> <laughs> what a surprise, right? Well, but yeah, it is your district. So uh, I have a few questions for you. Sure. So uh, first question, California is in a very bad situation right now. The left has a super majority in our government. Yep. It's, it controls our legislative, executive, and even our courts too. Uh, I said the left, not the Democrat, because a lot of time, even when Republican got elected, they still vote with the left. So uh, can you tell us why that is and uh, what can you do when you got elected? Sure. Well, part of the problem is, is most of these politicians are bought and paid for, uh, okay. either through uh, uh, the big unions or um, uh, people controlling their, their pocket strings, that type of thing. You know, they have what I call sponsors. It's actually the people who have made the biggest donations to them, rather it be the electrical companies, gas companies, those type of things. And so they're beholden to them to vote what's in their best interest. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, I'm saying these entities' best interest, not your best interest, not my best interest, not anybody out here that's watching this is best interest. That's the problem with them. And what we need to do in Sacramento is make sure that we have somebody who's representing us yeah. and not representing those. Um, I always use the analogy of, of the NASCAR uh, racing suits. You know, they have all the sponsors on the, the suits all over the place and the bigger, more money they get, the bigger their sponsorship is on their, on their suits. Mike Fong, my opponent, has major sponsors. The California Teachers Union um, is one of them. Major money in his campaign. What about the police department? I mean, he does, the he does department... not have any police department support that I know of. Okay. If you look at my sponsor jacket, it has people's names on it. Oh. Because AI News. AI News, <laughs> you know, <laughs> right? So that those are the people that would be on my jacket and that's who I represent. I represent the people of our community. I don't represent the big conglomerates. You know, I do have law enforcement endorsements, but that's because of my career in law enforcement. They know that I will do what is best to protect the community. Mm. And that is what law enforcement cares about. Oh. Um, what do you think the problem is with, with people? Because most people don't know any of those uh, unions and then a big corporate that is controlling by the state and for the state. 
What do you think the problem is? Like people just don't vote for the right candidate. Instead, they just vote for whatever that is in their head. Like, like Mike Fung. I don't know. I don't even know how to ex describe him. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm not sure why it is that they do that. Sometimes it gets really hard to research candidates mm -hmm. and and to understand what they represent. Mm -hmm. um, I try and make my website as as clean as possible for someone to be able to see where I stand. And some people just say, oh, well, I, I'm a teacher, therefore I'm going to follow what the teacher association okay. or union um, wants. Yet they are only about making sure that the association or union gets money, but not voting for what is really going to be in our best interest or your best interest. And that's why you're seeing things so extreme. I mean, you, you mentioned the far left, not the Democrats, because there's actually some good Democrats out there. Mm -hmm. But you've got your far left and you've got your far right. Well, I don't want a part of any, either one of those sides. And the supermajority is probably the worst thing that anybody can have in leadership, rather it be the far left in supermajority or the far right in supermajority. Listen, our, our, our political arena was built on having two parties. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, that's the Democrats and the Republicans. And you were supposed to be able to marry these two together to come up what is it for what is in the best interest of our community. Well, right now that's not happening. So you have the Republicans over here, you have the Democrats over here, but they have the supermajority. So right now you see all these terrible bills that are coming across Sacramento, especially Sacramento, because they know that there's no opposition against them. They can't, the, the opposition, the right, the Republicans can't fight them to, to stop them from doing these things. So that's how we're getting some of these stupid laws passed that you're just like, where do they come up with this? And it needs to be back to the center, back to where you work together, you chip away at, at what is in the best interest before you finally come together and saying, this is what is the best thing for our communities to, to be successful. So right now, we're not successful because we have a supermajority that wants to have total control over everything. Yeah, I completely agree. It, the, the way you said uh, made me think about the Constitution Convention when the country is just made. And then uh, that's when two groups of the people, Federalists and Anti-Federalists, come together and write down our Constitution. And that's why our Constitution it's so great, and yes. the, the history behind it. Yep. So the problem is that there is one group of people that just trying to rule everything. So uh, they they want to be in charge of everybody. They want to have that control. People say it's it's communism. I mean, you could put all sorts of different words on it, mm -hmm. but whatever it is, just, your freedoms are gone. Yeah. And if your freedoms are gone, then why are you here in the United States? That's what's so great about the United States. We're free. We can do pretty much have the freedoms to, to do and go wherever we want. But you've noticed that the pandemic showed that where, well, you can't go anywhere unless you're vaccinated. You can't go anywhere unless you have a mask. You can't go anywhere unless you do what we tell you to do when we tell you to do it. Yeah. Sorry, that's not America. That's something that, that our forefathers fought for many years ago. And it's time to, to go back to the freedoms that we have. Yeah. My body, my choice only work for their interest. <laughs> for, for their agenda, but not for, for what you and I are. Yeah, and uh, speaking of freedom, uh, you work as a policeman most of your life. So what do you think about our police right now? And then uh, as the crime rising, crime rate is rising, it just seems that all the problem is not getting solved by the police. What do you think the problem is and how do we solve it? Politicians. Politician? Okay. Politicians are the problem. Okay. So the politicians write the laws. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Then, once they're approved, you know, whether it be by the people or by the legislature, it gets put into the, the, the book that law enforcement uses. Okay. And then law enforcement enforces this law. In 2012, they came up with AB 109, which says our jails, our, our prisons, our, our state prisons are too full. And therefore, we're going to start releasing them back into the counties. And to do that, the county jails had to start letting people out. So that was the start of it in 2012. 2014, um, 
now LA District Attorney George Gascon was co-author of Proposition 47. That made petty theft from $400 to $950. It actually made a, stealing a gun a misdemeanor, from a felony to a misdemeanor. Do you see we're having problems with our guns, and they want to have more gun laws, yet... It depends on what the, the gun they steal, though. Yeah, <laughs> right, but I mean, you know, there's guns out there that are, you know, two, three, four hundred dollars. It used to be a felony to steal it, it's now a misdemeanor. So, again, politicians created this, this arena that we're now in, and it, that's hurt us. Um, that's caused more pr criminals to come out of jail because they had to make more room. Um, and the, the courts said that, well, we're not building jails, so therefore you're going to have to let these people out early. So now people aren't even serving their sentences anymore. And then you have Prop 57 that actually just finished letting the rest of the, the floodgates open and, and anybody who's um, uh, a drug addict or anything like that can't get help anymore and they're just out on the street. And, and if you look at the homeless situation, you'll see that um, when these things kept passing, the homeless population kept increasing as well. So anyway, AB 109, Prop 47, Prop 57 was the criminal's what I call trifecta. Mm -hmm. And if you're into horse racing, man, that's, that's the, that's, you know, you win the trifecta, you won a whole bunch of money. Well, this is what criminals have. Criminals get to um, have total freedoms of whatever they want to do, and uh, there's no consequences for the crimes anymore. So that is why it's so difficult for the police. Uh, I'm a retired sergeant from the Sheriff's Department. My wife is a retired sergeant from the Sheriff's Department. Oh, wow. We have a son who's a deputy sheriff on the Sheriff's Department. Oh, your whole family's We, we have a nephew that's with the Burbank Police Department. Our nephew and our son is still having issues dealing with things out in the public because the politicians have, have destroyed our, our rule of law and, keeping, and holding people accountable for their actions and we're talking career criminals, not somebody who made a mistake and, and whatever and, and committed a crime or, or did whatever. They serve their time and, and, and they're done with it. And they're like, I learned my lesson. The career criminals are those that had three, four, 10, 20, 40 convictions. They know nothing's going to happen to them. They're going to be written a ticket they never show up for. And they're going to go right back out and steal. That's how these smash, smash and grabs are, are happening to our businesses. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't know how our small business owners are surviving the criminal element that the politicians have created. The majority of the politicians think they had nothing to do with this. I'm telling you they had 100% to do with this. And that's why we need somebody with a law enforcement background who has worked the street the majority of his career. I have almost 40 years in law enforcement. So it's like, I, I know what it takes out in the street. I know what it... When I go to a call and I talk to you, I know what you're going through because I've seen it, I've been there and I've done that. You know, I've almost lost my life in the line of duty. Um, I've been shot at, I've been in shootings. I know what it takes and I know what the officers are dealing with. And these politicians have no clue. Mm. They think they know what's going on and they have no idea what's going on in the streets. You gotta remember, the majority of them are rich. They don't care. Mm. They're not seeing any policy effect that affects them. Yes. I see what it's affecting because I see what it's doing to my neighbors, to my friends that own businesses. I see what's happening to, to you. Has it happened before? Like when you were a policeman? Because yeah, like, well, when, what, what do you think the most changed, changes there is? Like back then when you were a police and now, what's the biggest difference? Sure. Well, when, when I first became a police officer, we didn't have a three strikes law. Mm -hmm. So the three strikes law, man, if you had if you were convicted and served time on three felonies, that you would be 25 years to life in jail if you were to connect, commit another crime. Yeah. So that's your career criminal that gets involved in these things. And that was the, the incentive to stop most crimes. Stop most crimes. Stop, yeah. stop these things. We're afraid of it. It's like, well, I'm a two strike or one more strike and I'm 25 to life. So, you know, I, 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 no, I'm, out of, I'm out of this gig. You know, and we were doing well in, in the, you know, in the, in the early 90s is when it was just, you, you had multiple drive-by shootings. I worked the city of Rosemead the majority of, of my career at Temple Station, but I worked the entire area. In Rosemead, we had many drive-by shootings. I, I, we would have four or five or six drive-by shootings a night. Really? Yes. Not all of them made the news, 
but we had them. Uh -huh. And it took this three strike laws to, to bring those down and stop them. And now drive-by shootings, why they still happen, they don't happen anything like they did in the early 90s. So our politicians changed the laws in the 2000, but in the late 90s, we were probably in the, in the early portion of 2000, we were probably in the safest part of our communities that we could possibly be. And now, where are we? We have a district attorney for Los Angeles County who is all about giving the criminals complete freedom. He cares more about the criminals than he does um, the victims. He, he doesn't care about them. Uh, case in point, the Almani police officers that were shot and killed um, a couple of weeks ago. This suspect was a parolee who's been in state prison numerous times for his crimes. Wow. And the DA Gascon said that he was nonviolent. Listen, if you're a parolee, you're violent. Okay, you've done state prison time, you're, you're violent. violent. If you've been arrested for domestic violence, you're <laughs> violent. Hello, politicians, it's wake the, the hell up. This is what is the problem. Okay. And he let him out saying he was not violent. He was a parolee caught with a gun with drugs, and it's not the first time. He let him out. He should have had 36 months in state prison for when he, for, that was a minimum that he would have been offered. He could have been longer than that, but 36 months was offered, or 32 months was offered to him. And when the DA came in, because um, in he was sentenced in February 2021, yeah. DA Gascon came in in December uh, uh, 2020 with his new directives saying you can't have priors, uh, you can't use a gun enhancement uh, to his crimes, you can't use his, his previous stuff. He got two years probation. I'm sorry, once you have been a state prisoner and you have been on parole and out and convicted and put back into jail, you don't get probation again. Yeah. He put him on two years probation. Yeah. Probation basically means he have to check in with his probation officer, but he don't go to jail. He can just do whatever he wants as yep. long as he check in. As long as he checks in. Yeah, and I see a lot of them. Now probation officer, you can you don't have to be there in person. You can check in by phone. Yep. I be think that is the stupidest thing and on earth. The pandemic was part of that as well. Okay. Because it's just like, oh, we, just so we don't expose anybody to COVID, uh, just call in and let me know you're okay. You're doing what you're supposed to do. Come on, this is that's. Trust me, it's that's not how this works. It's it, that, obviously not working. Yeah. <laughs> but here we have two El Monte police officers who grew up in the city of El Monte and wanted to give back to their community and became police officers to, to protect them. And we have this guy who should have, should have never been out on jail, um, who was out on jail, and they pretty much stiffed in a call for nothing, lack of a better word, and killed these two officers. What do you most want to change about California right now? <laughs> our crimes, our crime laws, our taxes. You know, again, my, one of the, probably the, the first thing I would want to do up in Sacramento is start to help with the repeal of Proposition 47. That was the, one of the main gate openers and, and uh, um, the cost of stealing an item back down and getting rid of um, a petty theft with a prior. That's why you can go into a store, steal something under $950, go next door and do it and do it and do it again. Uh, before, that would be enough for us to keep you in jail and now we can't even keep you in jail. I want to do what is best for my community and that's to protect the community. Mm -hmm. And that means criminals need to be held responsible for their actions. Um, our tax dollars need to be used properly. Mm -hmm. um, we need to have audits done on anything that uh, our tax dollars go to to make sure the money is being used properly. Um, and we got to stop this, uh, uh, you know, politicians have their hands in a lot of businesses that are getting contracts to do things. Um, and that needs to stop yesterday. Yeah, it should stop, I will say two years ago or something. Yeah, when many we, years we, ago, yeah. many years ago. Look at the bullet train. Yeah, that you know, is crazy. That, that is, uh, 
Diane Feinstein's husband that's got the contract to build the bullet train to nowhere that's going nowhere. Yeah. And billions and billions of dollars are being lost. Yeah, and just the whole politics, like Nancy Pelosi is related to Eric Swalwell and Gavin Newsom, and all, 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 they're all related. They're all... It's so weird. And, and that's part of the problem we have with our politicians. And then you got George Soros, who's a billionaire that's... Founding uh, everything. He's funding all these far-left agendas. It's all about control, control of the people. That's all they care about, because when they have all the control, they have all the money. And that's why it's so important that we stop these politicians that are being supported by these extremists such as Soros. Mm. Okay, um, next question. When last election, uh, we had Mike Fong, your opponent this time too. What are the biggest mistakes that him or Ed Chow made that you think you can do way better than them? Well, Ed Chow voted yes on Proposition 47 and 57 to make the criminals just have total freedom. Um, he's also voted to increase the gas tax, uh -huh. uh, Ed Chow did. Um, and now Mike Fong has voted to increase your gas tax. How is that happening, right? He's, he's brand new. He had a special election in, in February that um, nobody showed up to the election at. And um, so he was able to, to win that election. The Republicans have five times now gone to try and suspend the gas tax. Um, and the Democrats, Mike Fong included, voted against suspending the gas tax. He's already hurting our businesses, and July 1st is another three cent gas tax per, per gallon gas tax that is coming on that he also voted not to remove. So he's voted to add an additional gas tax July 1st on our communities. We're already hurting with high gas prices. It's hurting our businesses. It's hurting mom and dads that are trying to go to the store to get food for their kids because that also increases the cost of delivering the foods to the stores we go to. So everything is up. When gas goes up, everything goes up. Your, your people that come and do service jobs to, to fix items, um, your food goes up. Um, going to fast food restaurants, foods go up because the cost of it getting delivered to them has gone up. And Mike Fong is destroying our businesses and he's destroying our, our families and the, the money we have to make our families safer and, and happy, and um, he keeps increasing the costs of that. There are a lot of a lot more robberies and theft in the Asian community right now. Uh, what did Mike Fung do to make that even worse? Well, he's not coming up with anything to, to stop it. He's, he voted no on appealing Proposition 47. Um, that would have helped mm. because, again, it would help make criminals responsible for their actions. As far as I'm concerned, he doesn't care about the Asian community. He doesn't care about the white community. He doesn't care about the black community. He doesn't care about the Hispanic community. He doesn't care about anybody. He only cares about whatever the uh, politicians want him to care about. Uh, and I'm talking about the far left controlling politicians care about. He has every ability to come up with legislation to protect our community, mm. and he hasn't done it. Mm. I don't think Judy Chu wants him to do that. So I, I, think, <laughs> I think Judy Chu, well, I can tell you, I don't think Judy Chu. I know no. Judy Chu is the puppet master of Mike Fong, just like she was the puppet master of Ed Chow. Mm. Remember, Mike Fong moved into this district. Yeah. We, I've told you I've been here since 1967. Yeah. Mike Fong moved into this district a year or a year and a half ago so he could run. The it, Democrats, really? Judy Chu, brought him over here because Ed Chow was now becoming a superior court judge for Los Angeles County because he didn't want to fight this fight anymore. And he wanted his easy job, so he was appointed to a, to a judgeship in the superior courts. Now we have his far left ideologies uh, uh, with our criminals, in other words, letting everybody go from jail um, in this court. Um, and they brought in Mike Fong to be the next person to take the seat of the State Assembly in the 49th District. This is the problem, folks. We need to have someone who is from the community, part of the community, still part of the community, here in the community, fighting for the community, not someone who's brought in to, quote, represent the community. Exactly. Uh, do you feel like you're an underdog right now uh, in California? Or do you think you this time you will have the chance to take back our country uh, this coming November? Well, I'm definitely an underdog. 
but the underdog can win. The problem is, is people need to, one, vote their values. Two, stop voting for race or sex or anything like that and start researching the actual candidates that are on your ballot. Now, the primary election was a very large ballot. You had some 30 some odd people running for governor. It's very hard for the average citizen voter to, to research these people and they really, they don't know. The November election, you're gonna have two people to choose from in each race. It makes it a lot easier to research two people than it is <laughs> 40 people, right? Okay, yeah. So that's the number one issue that voters need to do is do their research <coughs> and find out what candidate represents your values. Vote okay? for values. Vote for values. The second thing is you hear a lot of the rhetoric of um, my vote doesn't count. Why bother? They're going to win anyway. That's the problem. That mindset has now told the person who was on the fence about getting ready to vote to not vote. And if they don't vote, you've just given the other side, that's probably not the side you're for, two votes. Because yeah. your vote will take away one of those votes. But if you don't vote at all, they now have two votes. In essence, they have two votes. Yeah, that's the biggest problem, I think, in the Asian community. Basically, uh, last election, when I did the research, when I look at the last election between you and Mike Fong, I'll say if the parents in Arcadia High School care about their kids' education and they all go out and vote, you will win just by Arcadia High School's parent. Yep. We just need a couple thousand votes and then we can beat the Democrat and their agenda. Yep. But people just don't seem to care. People vote with their race. People vote with their, not with their conscience, I, I, I think. I, I think they just, they think that, oh, well, if I'm Asian, so I'll just vote for the Asian guy because he'll do what's best for our community. But then you look at his record and you look where he stands mm -hmm. and what his party or that party may represent, and that's not going to be representing your values. Uh, if you've come here from a communist country. Mm -hmm. And you vote communist. And you vote for a <laughs> communist, you're going to get communism. Yeah. Okay. If you come to America so you could have freedoms and be free, voting for the Asian is not necessarily the right vote. There are some Asians that are conservative and will be voting your values, but Mike Fong is not one of them. And that's why your vote for me would be voting for your values and voting what is in the best interest for not only you, but the Asian community and the community and state as a whole. Please tell us again uh, the district and the city that you're representing and uh, what we can do to help you to go in there and represent us. Sure. The most important thing to do is vote for Burton Brink for the 49th Assembly District. And that covers the cities of Arcadia, Alhambra, uh, South Pasadena, San Marino, San Gabriel, Temple City, El Monte, Rosemead, um, Monterey Park. You have to tell your friends to vote for me. That's one of the things you need to do. And you need to go to my website, uh, burtonbrinkca.com. It's B-U-R-T-O-N-B-R-I-N-K-C-A.com. And uh, check me out on, on the website. Uh, volunteer. Make a donation. Um, I, even though I'm endorsed by the Republican Party, because those are the values that I hold, the Republican Party does not give me any money. Um, I have no support no big checks coming in as I said my support is from the community and I need everybody's help um, volunteers are great but if I have no money to print up um, flyers to go to door to door and to um, do the translations and get this information to every single voter I can't win I can only win if you tell your friends and tell your neighbors about me and you vote very important that you vote. Don't let anybody tell you that your vote doesn't count or it's a rigged election or anything like that. We can't fix it if we can't get elected. And I can't get elected unless you go vote. And I can't get elected if you don't support me. Well, thank you, Mr. Brink, for coming. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, let's keep this election in our prayer and in our 
daily prayer. Seriously, Absolutely. we really need to change it. We need to switch things up in California. And uh, thank you for, and please share this video. Let more people know about Burton Brink and vote for him. We got a country to save and it start with the local election. Absolutely. <clears throat> Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, thank you so much, Ethan. Well, thank you. Appreciate it.